God bless you. God bless you, somebody. So, as I was saying, uh, let me just do a quick prayer and then we'll start. Father Lord, I thank you for today's message as you have given it to me to talk about. And I pray that you take dominion over to this program and uh, let this message fall on fertile ground. Let it bring healing and deliverance to somebody. Let it strengthen somebody's prayer life as you have helped me. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you as you join me. Now, uh, we all know prayer is a very powerful uh, tool for believers. Prayer is the key. We sing about that song, prayer is the master key. It's a song that we sing even from our, our kindergarten that we have learned to, to sing. First of all, let me just tell us the importance of prayer as a believer. The importance of prayer. Prayer is, in fact, an authorized channel to get to God. It's a very strong, powerful, authorized channel for us to get to God regularly in prayers. Number two, it brings God's presence to our lives. When you pray continually, you feel it. You feel that God's presence, even in your sleep, the presence of God follows us wherever we go because we continually build our spirit with prayer. Number three, the Bible has admonished us to pray without season. Says the Bible, Kandalabo Sotori Kadaba. Father Lord, I cover this channel right now with the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The Bible has admonished us to pray without season. Number four, it builds us up spiritually and prevents us from falling into temptation. If you look at Jesus, after he has been baptized, he went into the wilderness and fasted and prayed for 40 days and 40 nights. So by the time he came out of that powerful prayer section and Satan wanted to tempt him, Satan could not get to Jesus. He could not tempt Jesus because Jesus has been in 40 days and 40 nights of prayer. He was in God's presence. Number, hello, Favor, how are you? Number five, it opens our eyes. To the realm of the spirit i have by the grace of god i have had experiences of when I, of when praying deep prayer section i am seeing angelic lights i have my eyes closed but i am seeing things i have had experience where i am praying i have actually felt a hand a hand just on my shoulder reassuring it comes the spirit of god comes with no fear number six it is a strong shield Prayer is a strong shield against satanic devices. When you are in always, when you constantly are, are, are strengthen yourself with prayer, demonic devices, satanic devices, it is hard for it to, to it, they, might, they might try. The Bible already said, in one way they will come, in several ways they will pray, but uh, in several ways they will scatter, excuse me. But the only way we can achieve that is when we constantly in a prayer mode with God. Number six, prayer brings God's mercy, God's mercy and forgiveness. When we pray, when you know you have sinned, because the Bible already said, all have sinned and come short of God's glory. How are we going to bring God's mercy when we fall on our knees in prayer and ask God to have mercy on us? Our God is a loving and forgiving Father. He will, he will, he will always hear you. Look at King David. King David, we all know in the Bible, King David, who the who God even said was a man after his heart. King David, King David knew how to pull the strings in God's loving heart in prayer. Even after committing the sin of adultery, he even killed the husband of the woman he committed adultery with. with. Yet, it is somebody that God said is after his own heart because he knew how to fall on his knees later and beg God for forgiveness. Those are some of the reasons why we pray. There are many reasons why we pray. Now, now, what are the reasons why you are weak in prayer? Why we, 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 we become very weak, unable to pray? Number one that I have here as the Spirit of God directs me to, to speak about today. Lack of a conducive environment, a secret place for you to pray. 
you may be in a in, in, living with a lot of other people you might be sharing room maybe sharing a uh, apartment and it, it's very noisy it's very it's not conducive every time you try to pray there's so much noise coming from some place uh, but there's always a way around it you must find a specific time of the day if you live in a place where it is so noisy find a specific time of the day where there's a little lullaby a little cool where you can have to actually have a conducive quiet time to pray to god god want to see that you are trying instead of just giving up on praying say, ah, this house is too noisy too many people living here all the tenants are noisy too much music and you just give up no you must find ask god to speak to you so you can find us a conducive time during the day or night whatever time for you to pray but you must always pray you cannot just give up on prayer because you are in a in an environment an atmosphere where there's too much noise or too much activities around you uh number two reason why you might be getting weak in prayer you used to be a very powerful prayer warrior all of a sudden you are getting quite weak you're not praying anymore before you realize it you haven't prayed for a whole week you haven't prayed for a whole month Number two reason why that might be happening to us. We too much work. We're working too much and getting little. You're putting all your efforts. You're working so hard. You always so consumed with so much hard work. But there's little to show for it. That's too much work. You get up all day. The Bible says to us in the book of Psalm 127, verse 2. It says, It is vain to wake up early in the morning and get back home late only to eat the bread of sorrow what that means is it is it is it is, it is vain it is not it is not profitable vain not profitable to get up so early be out all day looking for work or working so hard only to have nothing to show for it that is something that the enemy can put on somebody to to to, to hold you back to put sorrow and despair into you and if you're not careful you may just give up on praying because you are working so hard you get home you're so tired you can't even pray for five minutes anymore after that thank you jesus christ father lord jesus any unclean spirit right now on this page i set fire of the holy ghost upon you right now be roasted by fire in the name of jesus christ number three you're worrying too much you just worry about everything there's so much things what you just worrying about this and that you worry about this worry about job worry about food you worry about children worry about family just worry freak what are even things that other people may not worry about you worrying about it just occupy yourself with so much worries and before you realize it you're thinking all day shaking your hand and your leg all day yet you are not even thinking of praying your prayer life is going your prayer life is getting weak you must ask God to strengthen you to pray. May God strengthen you to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Number four, too much distraction. There are many things that distract us and, and begin to weaken our prayer life. We all know now there's so much social media activity going on. There's Facebook, there is uh, YouTube, there's Instagram, there is uh, Twitter, there is uh, WhatsApp, there's, uh, and then, and then we, sometimes we get added to, uh, I, I've seen some people try to enter my group and they're already in like, like 400 groups. We get distracted with so many, uh, uh, so many things distracting us. What are the things that can distract us? There is, uh, uh, too much social media activities can distract us. Uh, friends, friends can distract you. You just have too many friends calling you, just wasting your time, partying, going to diff uh, trying to, to meet up with different uh, demands or uh, occasions of, with friends. That is distracting. You must have to pull back. Because before you know it, if you look at it, if you are engaged in that kind of activity, that kind of behavior, take a look at your prayer life. It has become weak. It's a very, it's a very, very deceptive tool of Satan. You use that to weaken you so they can come and attack you. May the Lord Almighty protect us from, from, from friends and activities that will distract us and take our prayer life in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm speaking of all this even from my own personal experience until the Lord Almighty began to redirect my heart to let me see the things that I have been doing wrongly that was weakening my prayer life. Hallelujah. Number five, 
you allow the wrong people you allow the wrong people into your life the wrong set of friends it could even be facebook friends it could be real life friends you allow the wrong people to your life they are they don't bring anything good all they bring to you is gossip you be on the phone all day trash talking everybody else and gossiping everybody else they bring negative energy it is not building your prayer life before you realizing you can't even pray no more you are so occupied by different things that people bring to your ears to, 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 and that is a very powerful tool of Satan that will weaken our prayer life but the Lord Almighty give us the spirit of discernment to, to know who and who that can even that can even have our ears in the name of Jesus Christ now we are going to the demonic part. Number six, there are powers that have been assigned to attack you spiritually, mainly to just attack your, your spiritual life. This, what, what are these powers? There are ancestral shrines. There are ancestral idols. There are witchcraft powers. There are marine spirit powers. They have been living in your family for generations. All of a sudden, everybody has been serving idol, and now you are the one that God is trying to raise up from that family to lead, to raise you out of that darkness into God's marvelous life. But those powers, they are there. They are there. Your family and you, you have not been delivered from them yet. But you are, you, you are not a Christian. They will not leave you alone just because you gave your life to Christ. And, oh, I plead the blood of Jesus until you are delivered from those powers that have been reigning in your family for generations i'm telling you your prayer life will always be under attack because they are there that is their purpose because they know once you really they allow you to be strong in prayers that's it <laughs> their attack on your family is over so every time every time they will once you are rising up your prayer life your spirit is building they come again and they will send some things that will weaken you any power that is attacking our prayer life, those powers will die today in the name of Jesus Christ. Number seven, number seven, hallelujah. You are in the wrong church. You are in the wrong place, place of worship or the wrong church. Or you are following the wrong people online. Let me tell you, it is not everybody you see calling Jesus, Jesus online that is actually using the right spirit. They have their own Jesus in their coven. They have their own images that they name Jesus. Some of them, they can the name of Jesus. They know Jesus. Most, a lot of them. I'm not saying everybody. Please don't do nobody misquote me. But a lot of those demonic uh, agents of the enemy, they have their own king and their own images that they have named Jesus. That when they are praying for you, in the name of Jesus, you think they are calling our own Jesus Christ of Nazareth. No, they are not. They are referring to that their other gods. Now. That person is not the pastor of your church or is not among your prayer partners in the church. Forget it. They are, they are there mainly to attack your prayer life. So you are the one bringing the right energy into that church, surrounded by uh, demonic pastors and demonic uh, prayer partners in the church. It's not going to work. They are going to keep attacking your prayer life until they weaken you. They will find something. They can, they can even give you multiple assignments they, in the church to make you feel important. Before you know it, you are so engaged and involved in so many things going on in, the, in that particular church. Before you know it, your prayer life is down, it's zero. There they got you. May the Lord Almighty redirect our first step from evil place of worship in the name of Jesus Christ. Numbers 8. You have allowed the wrong hand to lay on you and pray on you. Or you have allowed the wrong hand to stretch towards you and pray of you pray on you it could be physically face to face it could be even online that is why me i don't follow or any i don't follow people online anymore i've had my share experience of evil witch, witches and wizards and marine spirits prophet and prophetess attack so i have i don't do that no more i'm strictly in god's presence on my own and by the grace of god things have made a, a 360 degree turn around for me spiritually so may that be your portion in the name of jesus christ you have allowed the wrong hand to either lay on you or to stretch towards you to pray or pray for you you may think they are praying for you but as they are doing that they are they are attacking your dream life they are collect they are collecting they are collecting your prayer life they are taking away your spiritual strength and you if you notice if you even think back you begin to realize that oh my god 
since I allowed this person to pray for me, since I, I started or since I started following this particular uh, group of people online or, or physically, then my prayer life has been, uh, it has become under attack and I'm unable to pray no more. May the Lord Almighty protect us uh, from, from, from uh, people like that. So how do, you, how do you protect your prayer life? You must, whenever you are beginning to feel weak in prayer, I'm, I encourage you, do not give up. Do not give up. If you don't have a conducive environment to pray, it is okay. If you share room, share apartment with people, you don't have your own personal space yet to build a prayer altar, to have a specific corner where you put your chair and your Bible and things, it is okay. After all, there are people in the marketplace who sell in the market, they still find time to pray. So just like I already advised, find that particular time of the day where, 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 where everywhere is quiet. It can be busy all day. There's always some time. It could even be night. It doesn't have to be. You don't have to pray only in the morning or only at night, only in the afternoon. There's a specific time every day around those people that you know that things are a bit quiet. Make that time your secret place. The Bible in Psalm 91 verse 1 says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High, we abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Find a specific time of the day that is conducive for you. Find a specific area in your house or in your place of work or in the marketplace, wherever it is, that is conducive for you. God wants to see the effort. So you cannot just give up totally uh, on prayer just because it's not conducive environment for you. You are allowing the enemy to just take complete control of your prayer life like that. May the Lord Almighty strengthen us. So let us pray. I'm going to give some prayer points here as the Holy Spirit put in my heart. May you use it. May it work to strengthen your prayer life in the name of Jesus. Prayer point number one. Oh Lord my Father, strengthen me to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh Lord my Father, strengthen me to pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord my Father, Lord, strengthen me to pray. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Prayer point number two. Powers that have been assigned to attack my prayer life die in the name of Jesus. Powers that have been assigned to attack my prayer life die in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Prayer that have been assigned to attack my prayer life die by fire, die by fire, die by fire of the Holy Ghost in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Prayer point number three. Any evil hand that has been laid on me or stretched towards me to pray for me to in order to attack my prayer life, that hand be rest roasted. That hand with the now, with the now, with the now, in the name of Jesus. Any evil hand that has stretched towards me or lay hand on me to pray and attack my prayer life, I say that hand dry up and die in the name of Jesus. Prayer point number four I cover my prayer life with the blood of Jesus Christ. I cover my prayer life with the blood of Jesus. I cover my prayer life with the blood of Jesus I pray I cover my prayer life with the blood of Jesus prayer point number five. Oh Lord my father return me to my secret place with you oh Lord my father redirect me redirect me to that prayer life with you return me to that secret place with you in the name of Jesus oh Lord my father redirect me to that secret place with you in the name of Jesus prayer point number six. Oh Lord my father Help me not to fall into temptation. Help me not to fall into temptation. In the name of Jesus Christ, oh Lord my Father, help me not to fall into temptation. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, prayer point number seven. Oh Lord my Father, chastise me, oh Lord. If I am going wrong, chastise me. 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 Prayer point number eight. Any evil friend, any evil person that has been assigned to attach to me just to weaken my prayer life, I command that person to die by fire, be roasted by fire, be roasted by fire, flee from me, flee from what concerns me, flee from my page, flee from my ministry in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. God bless you. I'll see you next time as the Spirit of God directs. Follow me on YouTube, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Facebook, Princess Ewaka Ministry. God bless you. I'll see you next time.